Stand up, fight back. When transit lives are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When transit lives are under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. The Metro Board hired Paul Wiedefeld. Guess what? The Metro Board can fire Paul Wiedefeld. And that's what we're calling for today. So when I say one, two, three, four, you say Paul Wiedefeld's got to go. One, two, three, four. Paul Wiedefeld's got to go. Don't call them that. Call them what they are. They're terrorists. Come on, 680. Okay, so know this. We're not just having a rally to hoop, holler, and raise hell. We're asking for something very specific. One, we're asking the public to call their representative and let them know because each representative of Maryland, D.C., and Virginia they actually appoint the general manager to the board. So we're asking the public to call your representative and let them know that you are appalled at the behavior that the general manager took on Sunday, and you are asking for that resignation along with us. We've, we've got five, six, seven dozen people out here. There were 20 white nationalists that attended the Unite the Right rally, and we spent $2.4 million of taxpayer money on the Unite the Right rally. Six, oh, excuse me, six, $2.6 million. But I have another question. Where's the park police? Where's the Secret Service? Where, yeah, where are they at now to protect us? They won't protect us, but they protect the white nationalists. That's why we need everybody to join with us as we call, you yeah, the terrorists. It's one over there. It's, uh, it's one. Y'all give the one police officer a hand for joining us today. So when you see him, say shame, 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 But I expect your resignation immediately, sir. Because if you can arrest, if you can harass, and if you can assault our youth and young adults in Ward 8 for fair evasions, for funding that they don't have, and you spend $2.8 million and get special preferential treatment to these people, it's not acceptable, it's unheard of, it's unconscionable, and we do not accept it. I feel like the police should keep everybody safe every day. Do I feel letters, like keeping, I keeping 20 people safe from a terrorist group? I didn't see where the terrorist group was under any kind of attack. I didn't see anything from what I saw was all peaceful people. The other side were peaceful people coming to protest what this terrorist group wanted to, pro wanted to do. So to say that you were keeping people safe, who were you keeping safe? Were you keeping the terrorist group safe or were you protecting the protesters? who was the counter-protesters protesting what this terrorist group was going to do. Because from what i seen and what I know about the history of this group, the only people who are at danger, the only people who have ever shown any type of violence is the people who got the special privileges. Those are the people who got the protection. If you were going to protect anyone, you should have been protecting the counter-protesters from this terrorist group. And I heard a really interesting point about this, which is that, you know, there's maybe one cop here, like physically among us right now, there's maybe one cop, uh, maybe a couple more. I think I see one cop car over there. But basically, you know, 
yeah. spending spending normal hours, no overtime hours, no barricades or nothing. How does it kind of make you feel that your demonstration is treated with virtually no protection, whereas they spent two and a half million bucks on, on this? It's guys? an insult. It's not only an insult to me as a 689 member, but it's also an insult to me as a member of this community. For you to spend our tax dollars, again, on a terrorist group, and then, like we said earlier, we have one transit police officer standing over there. We have one DC police officer who just so happened to be parked over there, probably going to get him something to eat. You know, the truth about it. But this group got police officers from all jurisdictions to protect them. I mean, the photos you see, we have a whole lot more. But let's not make it about what the police did. Because the police wouldn't have had to do any of the things that they did had we to feel not giving them permission to do it. We have our own police department. We call on them daily. 689 call on our police department daily to protect our workers. And here it is on September the 1st of 2017, we had operators who were disciplined for not wanting to take a bus out on the route where they have had many of assaults on. They were disciplined for just asking for a police officer. We're talking about the people who work here. But when you take a terrorist group of 20 people and you give, you spend $2.6 million protecting them, like they say, come on, man. You know, um, I lived in, in D.C. for many years until I got married and moved out. But as a, as a person who does business in D.C., as a person who represents workers in D.C., there is enough that needs to be done with taxpayers' money. There is enough. Our school system alone needs tax, tax dollars sent to it. You know, if you look at goods and services and all of those things that the government is supposed to be um, for, you know, I represent workers. So just the workers that work in the district and they do business with the government of the District of Columbia, I'm sure there's contracts that go on that have to be paid. That money could have been used for something other than 25 white nationals. And so I, I was in the metro, I filmed as this was happening. Right. Um, when you see uh, Unite the Right attendees and right above them was the word special. Right. Special line. Right. Tell me about the images. How, how does that make you feel to sort of see Metro giving them that kind of treatment? That tells me that this nation that I love so much, this nation's capital, gave special treatment to a group of people. You can call it whatever you want to call it. And that's why we call it a lie. Because if you can't just come out and say, I put a special train in service for them, instead he said he was not giving special service. It was a lie. And it, and, and it, it does something to you because the very fiber of our being tells us that we're supposed to fight against this kind of prejudice, this kind of hate, you know. And this group not only hates African Americans, I mean, I've talked about the 80% African Americans that, that are represented here at WMATA, but there are other people of color that's also in that 100% of WMATA employees. There are people that make up the fabric of this nation's capital that are of every persuasion that you can name. And this group hates us all equally. And then you give special service to a group that hates the riding public. Yeah. Assume that they couldn't have done it any different. Should they at least have told the truth about it? Yes. And so kind of tell, tell me about that. How does it feel? If they, if they had told the truth about it, you wouldn't see us out here now. We wouldn't have anything to say. The fact that you lied and you were deceitful, the whole time that they were planning, they were lying. I know for a fact they had a meeting on Thursday where they were planning what train was going to be used. And he was still lying to the public saying there was no special service. 